It's just one of them days that a girl goes through when I'm empty inside. Don't want to take it out on you, Jamsters. Uh, Suns lose. In case you didn't watch the game. In case you have no idea what happened with the Phoenix Suns in game one of round one of the Western Conference playoffs for them. And you, whoa. I'm starting to hear a bunch of reverb. That was... Let's just go ahead and bring in Matthew. Matthew, how you doing? <laughs> You're on mute. Oh my god, automatic mute. All right, yeah, um, not feeling good. Twenty-five point loss, um, not what you expected. But if you look at the season in total, then yeah, you expected that. <laughs> We're closing out tabs right now. Cool. Yes. Are we getting kicked out? <laughs> I just realized what happened, Matthew. I was hearing reverb because I had YouTube open in another page because I'm going to be posting a poll in this year podcast. So I was double hearing it. So my apologies, Jamsters. But thank you to everybody who's joining us live. We are here at Blue Agave in Scottsdale to, for a Suns Jam session watch party. And I guess that we done did what the Aussies did. Uh, we had a game in which the Phoenix Suns played, and we hosted a watch party. And in true fashion, we will take the L on this one because they lost because of us, Matthew. That's all we get. All this shit we talked about with the Aussie Suns, but now we have to go through it. Hopefully it's not an 0-3 start like theirs. Uh, <laughs> well, we're not doing all those brutal. watch parties. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's true, actually. Yeah, we won't be here for the next two games, but um, a response from the Suns the next game would be nice as you wait for someone to pay your tab, yeah. Yeah, uh, as jo JoJo Siwa would say, karma's a bitch. And that's what kind of happened because we talked all that shit to the Aussies about how every time they do a watch party, the Suns lose. Well, here we are in the Suns Jam Session podcast, and alas, that we have lost. So uh, as Meat Popsicle says in the chat, it's over. <laughs> Meat Popsicle. Sucks. <laughs> uh, so, here we go. <laughs> here we go. So, Love it. Uh, blow it up. Season's over. It's all yeah. good. But yeah. We thank everybody who's joining us here on the Suns Jam Session Podcast. Let us know in the chat how the audio sounds. I know it's probably not going to be as high quality as it would be if we were coming to you live from our domiciles. But again, we're at a bar, so I do apologize if you hear fun playing over the over the overhead, if you will. Uh, we'll do our best to kind of mute back and forth so we don't reverb over ourselves and you have to hear fun twice. But overall, uh, a disappointing show by the Suns, uh, and I think that there's plenty to delve into when it, when we talk about this game. So again, thank you for joining us. If you're new to the Suns Jam Session podcast, hit the thumbs up button if you're on YouTube. If you're on Twitter, head over to YouTube. Give us that thumbs up. If you happen to be somebody who wants to sign up for the Autograph app, it's a great application where you can get all your Suns content, including this here podcast. You could just go to the Autograph app, sign up using promo code Suns Jam. It helps us. It helps another way to support the pod. And make sure you subscribe, rate, review. I'm at Darth Voida. I'm John Voida, the managing editor of Bright Side of the Sun. He's Matthew Lissy, and he would tell you that he's at Matthew Lissy. And the show is at Suns Jam on all of your socials. So without further ado, I think that we're going to be drinking some beer because we've been drinking some beer. And let's just pop into this motherfucker. The Phoenix Suns lose by 25. It's a 25-point loss in Game 1 against the Minnesota Timberwolves tonight, or today, or this evening, or this morning, depending on where you're watching this game. But 25 points, and I, I got a funny little uh, story about 25 points. But I will ask my first question. Matthew, I've got to ask. Wow, there's some sex to that one. No more void, and I don't mind that, but I, do, I like the black and white, man. <laughs> you know, I've always wanted to go to a, uh, a New York, um, like, uh, a spaghetti factory and listen to, like, some Frank Sinatra and some spaghetti with some black and white, you know, ambiance to it. So that's almost in the alley. 
Yes. Yeah, it, it, well, it's kind of like in Goodfellas, you know, how like Goodfellas, they mark him through the Coco Cabana and then he ends up yeah. at the front table and he's like yeah. sitting there hearing a crooner. Like, that's what you got right there. You got a little croon dog asking you, Matthew, I got to ask. It's like uh, you look forward to today. Yeah, it's, it's all we got is some, some new drops that we'll throw your way here. Uh, it's playoff time, so we'll give you something new. But the first question I have to ask is, Matthew, it's 420. So is that why Booker didn't know his ass from a headband in this game? You're saying he's a little high? Is that is that what you're saying? Yeah. I mean, that's always our excuse, right, when this team plays poorly is just actually baking the night before. I'll, I'll go with that. But, yeah, the dude was struggling. Uh, he looked a little high out there. Maybe seen a couple of rims out there. Because usually those shots he had today, they would have went in. But today it was just it, – it was a different story. Um, 420 is one of those dates where you like to sit back, relax, and stuff. But the Suns had to get up early this morning. They had to get up early for Minnesota Timberwolves. That hurt all the shit about them not being the actual team to come through in this series and win this series. The Suns were almost favorites, and they were favorites. Money line going into this game was the Suns. So that's a lot of disrespect for a number three seed. That could have been a number one seed. And uh, we had to feel it today to start out game one. Yeah, I think it's time to throw the drop in there and just talk about Devin Booker. I think it's a good starting point for this one. Big Dick Booker. Yeah, it was it was a rough game for Devin Booker in this one. Scored a total of 18 points in you know the time that he he played, and you, you take a look at kind of his overall quarter by quarter performance because. Somebody just texted me back, and I got the uh, the password, Matthew. <laughs> uh, but Booker in this game, you know, if you take a look at the first quarter, uh, O of O, or I'm sorry, O of, or two of five from the field for five points. Second quarter, four, or I'm sorry, one of four. Third quarter, O of four. Fourth quarter, Devin Booker, two of three. So ultimately, in that second half, Devin Booker goes two of seven for eleven of his eighteen points. But again, a a a challenging effort put forth by Devin Booker in this game. Not what you expected, because generally Devin Booker shows up and, and shows out. So that's why I'm wondering, like, was he woke up early this morning? Because, again, Minnesota's a couple hours ahead. You know, this is a 1230 start here in Arizona, which makes it a 230 start in Minnesota. Did he do a little wake and bake action? He's like, it's fucking 420. I'm going to get my fucking bake on, and I'll be fine. And then he wasn't. No, he's just serious with that. He's like the mom and dad in the situation. He's never going to smoke before a game or smoke probably ever. Who knows if he ever smoked. Um, but we'll ask him that later on, maybe 10 years from now, to see if he smoked before this game because it looks like it. But the way that Devin Booker actually had his shots, he had his looks, it looked like a good game, but there was not that kill on him at all tonight. I think a lot of the Suns' game plan was really, well, I don't know if it just was the game plan or just ended up that way. It was a lot of ISO. These guys kind of wanted to, you know, take it on themselves, like feel your turn. Kevin Durant, your turn, Booker, your turn. When it was Booker's turn, it was something that you definitely couldn't trust. So um, him shrinking in that situation, him shrinking in the situation in game one was kind of – it was it was, it was was disappointing because I saw a lot of hype videos today and yesterday to get ready for the playoffs. A lot of Devin Booker because you forget, like, this guy's there. With the way the Beals has been playing the last week or two weeks, he was the main guy to really get the Suns team to where they are now and a 7-3 and record to end the season. Booker, he's had his games hit or miss, but tonight, today, you want him to come through. I just think it's kind of like, all right, well, let's pack it in. He kind of looked like that in the fourth quarter. You couldn't count on him. I wanted them to go to Beal more, but it was just Booker, like, getting his shots, man. They just would not go down. He just looked disappointed. His cheeks were extra rosy. He knew exactly that this was not his type of game, and it's just, it's kind of disappointing, but it's only game one. Again, this is going to be like a feel out series, and we're going to find out as time progresses how. Devin Booker and the rest of these players are going to navigate the different matchups before them and how they're going to execute and how they're going to take advantage of them. Devin Booker looked overmatched a little bit today because of the defensive length that the Minnesota Timberwolves were throwing at him. And that's something that I knew that was going to happen at some point in the series. I don't know if I necessarily expected it game one, but I did expect the fact that they have Jaden McDaniels, the fact that they have Anthony Edwards and his tenacity who can kind of be thrown at Booker from time to time. Booker just wasn't comfortable making or attempting shots in this game. He was looking to defer and to pass. And overall, you know, you, you take a look and he ends, like I said, 18 points. The only, he had five assists. Uh, he had the four personal fouls as well, which really took him out of the game in that second in that second quarter, much akin to Anthony Edwards. Uh, we'll talk about him momentarily, how he rebounded from that poor start in that foul trouble. But 
it's going to be one of those things, again, feel-out game. And, and you hate to say that. You hate to sit there and go, the Suns, you know, it's a feel-out game, game one. Because had we won this game, you want to be like, this isn't a feel-out game. This is reality, baby. We are the fucking Suns, and we dominated. But the goal in this, in my personal opinion, is to take one out of two in Minnesota. To lose by 25 is frustrating. And I was sitting here at Blue Agave with some of the Jamsters. And shout out to all the Jamsters who came out here and supported uh, hanging out with us and, and drinking some beers and, and shooting the shit. And I was talking to Michael Kolb, who you guys normally see in the chat, and he's got the caps lock on. Uh, and we were talking about how it's like, you know, at halftime, I think the, da- the team was down by 10 or something. And I'm like, hey, as long as they don't lose by 25, I'll be fine, and I won't be mad on the pod. Uh, Matthew, they lost by 25. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's a number you don't want to throw out there because they might feed into it. The way that the Suns are playing tonight – Today, there's just no energy on the court between themselves, so they might feed out into the universe. Uh, grass on to those Suns fans across country here in Phoenix, and they got what you were giving out. And that's disappointing, John. I am very disappointed. But I was telling everybody today that I did <laughs> I did choose that the Minnesota Timberwolves would probably win the series, move on to the Western Conference Finals, but I did not release that on Twitter, and I don't want to even believe that. It's only game one. <laughs> And I'm not, and I'm not going to sit here, and I'm not going to say like, "Hey, the series is over" at all, because honestly, if you want to think, if you want to look at it the way that Devin Booker and Kevin Devarant do, where they're just like, "It's a make or miss league," while people are just throwing shit at me, I just, I think it might be that for this team. You know, the way they wanted to play tonight, it was make or miss. I'm like, when Katie's making shots, I'm like, okay, that's how we're going to win. If these guys are making the big shots that Anthony Edwards was, stop the throwing. Question, sh- the, the question is one: why people are throwing chips at you? That's the Jamster Gallery, and two, Matthew. Matthew, in all honesty, when's the last time you said anything on Twitter? Like, you, there's nothing you're like, I don't want to release that on Twitter. That's hey, not really what you do. Uh, but, uh, you know, you have the Jamster Society eating behind you, and they're enjoying a good chip or two, it looks like. But I did post my uh, my standings to start the season. So I was going to post my playoff bracket. I'm like, nah, I'll just save this. Because I got two, I don't want to get that one like. You know, that's too, that's too much for me <laughs> to handle. Your only retweet is from yourself <laughs> or the Suns Jam it's, Session Twitter account? It's usually those, it's usually those, uh, those porn stars or whatever that are on uh, Twitter. The bots. The, the, that come the bots. On there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, Matthew's getting peppered in the background by the Peanut Gallery, a.k.a. our lovely family that decided to show up and support us here tonight. And by tonight, I mean today. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a, a long series – lies ahead and we know that the the minnesota timberwolves Timberwolves are a good defensive team you see that the Suns scored 95 in the first game and you take a look kind of up and down the lineup on how that occurred and you see that you know it was it was katie and everyone else and i know that some people who are katie stands uh and who are watching this are sitting there and feel like we're not giving booker enough flack no i'm I'm giving booker flack do five of 16 from the field two of six from beyond the arc uh, it's just not good enough. 18 points in a playoff game on the road. I don't care if you're on the road or home. That's not good enough. Booker has to be better than that. He has to come out on high and be focused in on trying to be that secondary or primary score that I think you and I both believe that he could be, Matthew. Yeah, and I mean, we'll talk about Beal in a little bit. Um, definitely that, the, and the reason why we want to talk about Beal is because he was probably the better player tonight out of the three and you want to go heavy with them. But you still have, Beal, or you still have Booker and you still have KD. You still have two guys that you want to feed the ball. And you want Book, of course, to get at the shots to see if he can get hot. But when a guy like Beal is kind of feeling it the way he is, it's like, oh, go with him. And then all of a sudden he turns the ball over. Dude. I'm getting napkins that? thrown at me now. Like, it's, it's, Are you jealous of our pod? Get your own fucking pod. <laughs> our horse sisters. I guess on that note, we'll talk about one Bradley Beal. Playoff zone, man, it's time. It's time. It's time to start playing defense. It's time to execute and take care of the ball offense. It's time, man. We want to win the ring. It's time. It's time. And she said, you're not the only one, but you're the best Bradley. Bo, bo. Some new drops for this one, huh, Matthew? No, I was going to say, that's beautiful. It, it's very nice. It kind of plays into it. I'm like, wait, did he say it's time to not play defense? Is that what he said? <laughs> <laughs> that's what it sounded like. Yeah, but they, they did play good. They played good defense. They played, they played good they defense. They gave up 120. It was a yeah, great defense. The Timberwolves, yeah, but in the fourth, I feel like the Timberwolves are kind of just hitting those corner threes, or those crazy threes. You're like, oh, fuck, here we go. They're going to get on a run. But, yeah, they give up. Yeah, Bradley Beal in this game, 6 of 10 from the field. He had a total of 15 points. 
also had six assists in the game, only the one turnover. A couple rebounds. Matthew, tell me why you think he was the best son out there tonight. I just thought he brought the energy really in the first half, and then the second half when the when you can kind of see that Kevin Durant and, and Booker were not going to bring it, you want to go, you want to defer to him. Starting in the fourth quarter, I was like, okay, let's go to the guy, and then he kind of turned it over there <laughs> in the fourth quarter to try to get the momentum swinging. And I'm like, okay, never mind. It led to a timeout. It led to like their biggest lead, the Minnesota Timberwolves' biggest lead of like 18 points. So then I'm like, okay, well, you can't really trust either any of these guys. And I don't know if that's kind of hurting this team, but I think Beal brought the energy towards the end of the season. You want him to bring it. I think he was a lot of people's X factor coming into this game, and he kind of is. But maybe now in a playoff situation, they're trying to figure things out to where how how they can feed each other, how they can go off of each other, and how they can actually step up in the right moments. They're still trying to figure that out, and you can totally see it because of how discombobulated they are at times at just who's going to have the ball, who's going to share it, um, who's going to actually maneuver, who's going to play point guard. You saw a lot tonight, so I kind of thought he would be the guy to step up and kind of take bring this game back to being a little bit more close when we're down by 10 entering the half, but he was unable to do so. Yeah, I like what I saw from Beal 100%. Again, I go back to Booker. Like, you need Booker to be productive because what we got from Bradley Beal tonight is exactly what I want from Bradley Beal. Like, 15 points, yeah, I want him to score over 20, but like six assists. Like you said, Matthew, bringing the energy in the first half when the Suns needed some energy, uh, bringing that fuck shit up ability that he does possess, and we've seen over the last 10 games of the regular season. He brought that tonight, right? And, de- and Kevin Durant, who we will talk about momentarily, definitely brought us tonight with a fucking amazing KD game. And that's why I'm kind of – I'm bearing the lead, if you will, because I want to talk about KD third out of the big three because I absolutely love what I saw from him. And I feel like Bradley Beal did his part in lifting. Uh, it was Booker who didn't carry his end of the couch, if you will. And, and Beal gave you exactly what he should as a tertiary player. If he's a secondary player, it would be unbelievably frustrating to see him go for 15 and six. But as a tertiary player, let's say exactly what you need. The energy levels there. He did what he could relative to defense because that's, you know, again, we got to talk about that. And you mentioned that a little bit. It's like, you know, the defensive energy. He had defensive energy. There were other challenges that this team had and also some poor rotations on the perimeter which is something that we definitely see from the Suns. Nothing, and I'll go back to this, Jamsters, nothing that we saw tonight is surprising. If anybody's in the chat and is like, dude, what the fuck happened? I did not see this coming. Welcome to the Phoenix Suns in 2023, 24. Like, have you not watched this team? To be to lose by 25, I'm not frustrated. And I guess I'll, you know, just, just for fun, uh, because I enjoyed it so much the first time. <laughs> Matthew, I've got to ask. Like How Matthew's... many times did you rewatch that? How many times did you rewatch that? You made <laughs> like four. Good. I did it like four times. I made it right before I came here. Uh, but after this game, how are you feeling? Like, are you devastated? Are you crushed? Are you worried? Like, what is going through that little noggin of yours with a hat on ever so backwards? Um, the only thing I'm worried about, okay, so they missed some shots. They kept it close. It was fine. Like, I feel like Minnesota had to come out with their best shot tonight, and they did. And I think the Suns will make a lot of adjustments if they can to play more team ball moving forward. The one thing is few more, few more L. Uh, Oso says book locked up all game. That's the one thing that scares me. Okay, I understand Mike Conley does bring the defense, and maybe you think of him maybe as like a Drew Holiday who can lock him up this, se- this series, but that can't be a thing. Book has to outplay these guys defensively that are Agreed. actually in his position. Like it can't be a thing where it's like, oh well, he had he had that guy lock him up this series. He he just he was defeated in that way. Like you can't see that. Like we have a big three for a reason where they have to be unstoppable. And the only way we're gonna win these games, especially when they do go ISO when they want to take their turns, is book has to be outstanding. Now I do think that book did take a lot of good shots, good looking shots that did not fall. So it has to be both. It has to be either he has to punish Mike Connolly and make him not even known in the series and then lead the Suns to a five game or six game series. Or, I think mean, Booker just has to make sure that he hits those shots that are difficult shots. But I, I do think that I'm not too worried. I think relaxing and just, okay, it's a blow. A one loss is a one loss, no matter the outcome, no matter the score. I'm okay with that. I just think that they have to get back to, like, we are the better team because of our talent. And Book has to be the leader of that guy. We will talk about KD. Yes, a great game. But Booker has to come out to be the best player. And Bill has to be that supporter that beats, that's like the 1A right next to him. Or the 1B, I'm sorry. Yeah, I to answer my own question, I asked you in true Devin Booker fashion. I'm chilling. I'm chilling. You know, it's it's game one. It's too like I like what John Tran says in the chat. Uh, I feel like this was to be expected. 
need to expect that Minnesota would adjust. Yeah, like we beat this team three times this season. So they are going to overanalyze the tape and adjust accordingly and put the Suns into difficult matchups at home and come out with that fire. And the, the Suns tried to match it. The shot-making ability wasn't there. Devin Booker wasn't as aggressive. He was a little bit more passive because he was high as shit, I guess. And ultimately, they didn't leave with a, a, a victory. It sucks to see a 25-point victory. But how many times have we seen a seven-game series where a team won and there was one blowout game? Now, if they blow them out every – like in game two, like I might sit here and have a lot different perspective on what I vi- what I witnessed today. But I didn't, and I'm not, overly concerned. Are there lessons to be learned? Absolutely. And one of those lessons is uh, when the playoffs start, you better be ready for one Kevin Wayne Durant. Who the heck are you? Yeah, I'm Kevin Durant. You know who I am. Y'all know who I am. Did anybody see a sniper? Did anybody see anything? I'm one of the best players to ever play the game. So Kevin Durant in this here basketball game ends up going uh, for 11 of 17 from the field. Okay, that's my sister's birthday, by the way. 11, 17. Okay, 31 points, seven total rebounds, one assist, five turnovers. Again, always a challenge with Kevin Durant is those turnovers due to his high usage rate. He did have the worst plus minus on the team, a negative 20 overall. And I think that uh, obviously, you you know, if you look at that on overall, you'll be like, okay, it wasn't KD. Uh, it, 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 he wasn't it. But he's the one who got us through, in my opinion, that first half. The first half, Durant's 6 of 12 for 18 points, 6 of 7 from the free throw line, 3 assists, uh, a steal, only a couple turnovers. But I really like what I saw from Kevin Durant. And it's just a reminder, Matthew, that when the playoffs hit, like it's a different KD mode. He realized it's like, listen, if you're going to wake and bake, that's not the answer, dude. You bake after the game on 420. Well, I think Katie's just a walking bake, dude. He's just always baked. So he, he's good either way. And you get the 31 from KD. I swear to God. All these games end up with the 31 from KD. So I don't feel like he's ever going to be really the difference. So I think we, he even said in his, in his post-game uh, press conferences a few times, like, everyone, all the fans are going to point the blame at somebody. And I don't feel like we ever really do at KD. We talk about a shit game because he's just going to come in and get his points if he wants. He got us through some tough times tonight. But that obviously we know that's that that's not enough to win a playoff series. It's not enough to win a game. Like the other guy's going to step up. Um, but it was a good game by him. I think that he got some really good looks, and he drilled him. He made him. He made him a lot of times where I'm like, oh, shit, is that even going to go in? Made some difficult shots. He's he made sure that, hey, he got through a tough game where, where the other guys were struggling, where Grayson Allen was struggling. A lot of the guys, the bench was struggling like always. So he did his part. And that, honestly, that's just not – it's not good enough. And that's no, that's not a knock on KD at all. KD can play the most miraculous game, perfect game. It's never going to be enough because this team has to have other guys step up in a lot of different ways for them to win because he's going to give you scoring. He's going to give you the ice. So he's going to take the tough shots. And when they go in, it's not always going to mean a victory. So – I love Katie. I love everything he brings, but I never look at him or look at the box score and what he brings to this team as a victory. It's always everything else. It's always like Grayson Allen if he gets three's going, Grayson if he steps up, or if Boker and um, and Bradley Beal are able to be more aggressive at the rim and get their shots to go and hit the big threes. And yeah, we're gonna win. If we don't turn the ball over, we're gonna win. I never look at Katie's box score to be like, okay, he got 31. We must have won. No, it's always a win or lost. Are you getting shit thrown at you too? Oh no. No, oh, I'm just. I was going to have my wife come over here and take our picture while we're doing this, uh, but she's really engaged in the conversation with So Says Jay uh, from Fanning the Flame. So I don't know what they're talking that's gonna, about. That's going to take a while. <laughs> but, hey, hey, Webb, uh, take a picture of us while we're doing this so we look kind of cool and don't throw your own phone on the ground. I hope you didn't break your phone. That would really suck. Uh, we will not look at the camera. We will just act like we're doing what we're doing. Yeah, this is like totally staged. And if you're listening to the podcast, you know, like, yeah, look at me. I'm making a really good face. And, you know, like, oh, he has a sign. Oh, yeah. yeah, thanks, man. <laughs> yeah, he totally didn't know how to get low with my chin. No, uh, one thing I will say is that <laughs> is that when you build a house, you need a foundation. Right? Like, you have to lay down cement. It's got to be level. And from there, you can build. KD and his scoring is a foundation. And I know that when a lot of people hear what you said, they're going to knock you because you're like, well, KD can do whatever he want, but it doesn't matter because the team around him needs to be better in order for them to win. And there's some truism to that, but I, I don't think, and, and at least in my perception, there's not a level of disrespect that goes with that because what Kevin Durant brings is the foundation of this team. 
you know, both he and Devin Booker went for 27.1 points per game this season. They were both seven points shy of setting the single season scoring average record for the Phoenix Suns in the history of the franchise. They both needed seven points more and they would have eclipsed Tom Chambers 27.2 that he said in 89-90 back with KJ and Hornacek and pre-Barkley days, right? So scoring 31 points for Kevin Durant is expected, but it's also and I'll put it this way, it's it should be appreciated. It's a and that's why this series again like I'm just chilling because we have a foundation of elite scorers and we have talent. Now Depth is another issue, and our depth will be tested. But any thoughts on on Kevin Durant before we go into some of that depth, Matthew? No, the only thing this reminds me of is the way these series might turn out, the way these playoffs might turn out. It's like when LeBron James kind of like carried the Cavs when he played. Uh, he went to like Game Seven against the Celtics. I think it was his final season with the with the Cavs. Maybe it was, but he the got first the time. Point. Was it the first time back? Yeah, like, like like back. I mean, he made the finals, what, his second or third year with, like, Zadrunas Elgoskis. Yeah, right? I just remember when he came back. It was, it was kind of like, you know he's going to lose to the Warriors, but the way he got to the finals was, like, he's going to take every other game off. It's kind of like live or die by the guy. But I feel like the way the Suns are going to play this series, and every series is like, we're going to have really bad games, which the Cavs on that series, the, the run they made to the finals – they had 20-point losses. They had the big 30-point losses. They had those big games, too, where they would come through and have blowout losses, but there were a lot of them were closer. I think that's the way the Suns team is. It's like They're going to be up one day, they're going to be down one day. They're going to be up one day, and that's like this whole season. Yeah, that's so the season to find. That's why you're chilling, and that's why I kind of am, too. And plus, I've had some beers, so I'm feeling pretty good. Yeah, it's uh, we're not smoking. We're drinking today here on 420. Uh, but you talk about the bench, and it's definitely going to be effective because – we had an injury today because, of course, we did. Hi, Barbie. Oh, hi, Alan. Oh, 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 oh. oh Grayson, Grayson Allen, our fuck shit up guy. Yeah, Grayson Allen got his shit fucked up. Looked like he injured his knee, uh, went to the locker room, did not return for the Suns, and... Of course, I made a secondary drop for him. So I'm going to put a poll in the chat. And uh, if you're listening on Spotify, there will be a poll there as well. And let us know if you like that old drop or this new drop. Hi, Barbie. Oh, hi, Alan. Oh, Grayson. Grayson Allen. A fuck shit up guy. Of course, he gets injured once I make this, the the new drop for the playoffs. But uh, what are your thoughts on the drops, and what are your thoughts on Grayson Allen getting hurt, and what that means for the Suns moving forward? You always have the one had the one injury when Beal went down. I think he was in the third quarter. He was holding his knee. I'm like, oh, here we go, because you're we, we used to with Chris Paul three years ago when they had the finals run. But um, I think Grayson Allen, of course, had a tough start, and it's it's one of those things like I mentioned earlier where you don't really base. It, Kevin Durant and his box scoring on the Suns win. You have to have those guys to step up, like Grayson Allen to make those big threes. He was 0 for 3 today. Didn't have the best stretch, but it's one of those things where he did sign a long-term contract for 70 million for 40 years. For 40 years, <laughs> what a deal! 40 years, 40 years. 65-year-old Grayson Allen. Why wow. can't he make a three? Why is he still on fucking payroll? <laughs> oh, we should do that. We should have those baseball contracts. <laughs> One of those, like, yes. 20 years, something crazy. Yeah, like Mookie Betts. He's going to be playing yeah, in Los Angeles years. until you're 85. Yeah. So, <laughs> I think uh, what you really watch for is how he can respond in big situations like tonight. And uh, he didn't hit the big shots. He wasn't really a reliability in my eyes. But also, you just wanted to keep taking the shots. And they weren't really there tonight. It was just a really bad, bad, bad start for Grayson now for the playoffs. A guy that is probably an X factor to a lot of fans out there and winning the series. He was the guy that I said would lead the Suns in point total average. Yeah, I know. And it's, you know, I hey, you know, I just thought he would have the shots and like he has all year. And I thought Booker and KD and Beal would have those off nights every other game where they would have like a game like tonight where KD actually had 31 points, but everyone else struggled. They didn't have those point holes, and Grayson Allen would have, you know, the better end of the stick, and he got hurt. So we'll never know the story. I might have been right. I, who knows? I, I think I was screwed on that. Yeah, it's uh, it's not what you want, and I, I didn't predict that he would be uh, the leading scorer for the series on our Bright Side of the Sun poll. Again, if you haven't checked out Bright Side of the Sun, go check it out. 
Uh, but I did say that both he and Yusuf Nurkic are X-Factors because you take a look at how Yusuf Nurkic and Grayson Allen played this season, and around that big three, you need a good buffer. Grayson Allen led the league in three-point shooting this season. Grayson Allen, uh, when he shot over five threes a game, the team was 28 and 17. So just having him shoot is unbelievably valuable for this team. As you mentioned, 0 of 3 from beyond the arc, 0 of 3 overall, only played 25 minutes because of the injury. And now if he's potentially injured moving forward, now granted, this is one thing to remember, Suns fans, and this is why I'm not overreacting because it, I watched the injury, didn't see too crazy, although it did look a little non-contacty, if you will. But there's three days until the next game. They don't play till fucking Tuesday. I hate the first and second round because they have like three games in between every fucking game. And then after you get into that rhythm, they're like, all right, in the Western Conference Finals and the Finals every other day. And it's just, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make fucking sense, NBA, how you fucking do it. But that being said, I feel like you, you, you have something to say on that. No, I was going to say, it's funny because every time we start the playoffs – this is always the first topic of like how they spread the games out. And it's it's always a thing. And I remember looking at the schedule, I'm like, yeah, I don't feel like we'll talk about it. But a lot of, if you go to ESPN, obviously, you watch those shows, they'll talk about it. It's too much time, too little time. I think with the Suns team, it's nice to have. I know they came out after having a week off and it looked bad, but they're their team that's a little bit older, having to do with KD and even deal with his injuries. But they need kind of the rest. And now with Grayson Allen and his injuries, so it'd be kind of nice to have the rest. Yeah, I completely agree. I think that it's it's going to be good. Uh, I know that Matthew's biggest fan is in here, and it's like, where that glad I bind at, John? Uh, <laughs> we're just like, <laughs> my wife makes fun of me because I write my name, not in glitter. Uh, it's in a silver Sharpie that I use. I write my name on my on my binder, and it's uh, that's the question. Uh, but it looks like Matthew Matthew's biggest fan. One, two, three is in the chat. Um, but again, yeah, it, it is a it is a topic of conversation during the first round. Is is there too much time? Is there not enough time? Uh, it just sucks because I'm so excited for game two, and and, and like you just want to get right back out there. And we know that we have to deal with Sunday and Monday upcoming before game two does occur on on Tuesday night. But also in this case, because of the fact that Grayson Allen could potentially be hurt, it's also time to heal. Now that being said, we do talk about the bench. Uh, and, and real quick, I just do want to say on the poll, uh, right now it's 55% say they like the new Grayson Allen drop. 45% say they like the old one. That's on our YouTube poll right here in the Suns Jam Session chat. Again, if you're listening on Spotify, you will have a poll to answer as well. Let us know. Uh, it's pretty even. So maybe it's one of those things moving forward. We just kind of we, we, we switch off, right? Like every now and then it's the old one. Every now every now and then it's, it's like Nurkalicious, right? Like we started with the Nurkalicious drop and we had the other Nurk was the Nurkic watch and we got rid of Nurkic watch because no one gave a fuck about that. Well, I mean, if he remains injured, he's going to go back to the old one. <laughs> Fair. 100% <laughs> true. I'm not jinxing anything. Yeah. But because of that, we're going to have to re rely a little bit more on the bench. And the bench tonight wasn't it, it was definitely an area of concern and we knew this entering the series this is a team that has a better overall bench than the phoenix suns if you look at total bench points the suns were outscored 41 to 18 in this matchup 14 of those came from royce o'neill matthew thoughts on the bench thoughts on the depth in the series for phoenix well i mean they're just going to roll out the seven man rotation that they got with royce o'neill and eric gordon um, it's kind of disappointing, but you'd like to see the U-Bakes minutes cut down a lot. But uh, I think when you're going through such a struggle, really, in, in the first half and you're going to the second half, you kind of want to see other guys kind of step in, like a bowl bowl. You know, those kind of guys that we love, that we actually want to see on the court, the guys that kind of get you back into a game where no one can really struggle. So, I mean, you're looking at the bench, you're looking at bowl bowl, and you're like, why can't he play? And the way that the Suns are shooting, the way that Booker and Beal are just kind of taking turns, the way that KD's, you know, playing ISO, it's like, just throw someone else in there with some energy, something to hype them up. Um, I think they waited too long. I think Bobo would have probably been a better uh, a go-to in the second half for the Suns tonight because now in, you're entering game two, which is a must-win. And if you enter it, if you go into the next game where it's going to happen again, where the Suns are down by 10 to enter the half, you're like, hey, who could we go to? Is there some source of energy? It's like, well, do you want to play a guy like Bobo? Do you want to play like a guy like maybe even Okogi? Thaddeus Young, I don't know. Can you trust these guys to kind of get you back in the game, to bring the energy back? I feel like you kind of kind of answered that in game one because in game one, you lose that game, it doesn't matter as much. 
You go down 0-2, that's even worse. So you kind of want to see what you want what you got from these other guys. And I wanted to see Bobo. I wanted to see Daddy Sung. I want to see these other guys that kind of helped us during the season and see what they had to kind of give us in this first game. But I feel like maybe it's too late. Maybe you tie it 1-1, then you can go back game three, game four. If it's more of a Suns favor, then you can look at these guys. I think it's too late, though, for game two. Yeah, I mean, it's a challenge because whenever you lose, you're going to sit there and you're going to – Say the grass is always greener. Well, Thaddeus Young got more minutes. We might have had a chance, and and things of that nature. With Grayson Allen potentially being hurt, or with performances uh, like the one that we received from Eric Gordon from Indiana University, number twenty-three, Eric Gordon. Can I just note, Matthew, that we've gone an entire season with the Phoenix Suns, and I still have L.A. Clippers fucking clips of Eric Gordon. That's how impactful that he was That just shows how season. much Aaron cares about Eric Gordon and his team. It just, it's never been anything. It was like, John Floyd, you gotta fix that drop. JV3, <laughs> fix that drop. That's our boy, Eric Gordon. Nope, never happened. So this is on you, Jamsters. This is on Eric Gordon having a shitty season and the Jamsters never ever talking up to John to fix that drop. That's how much <laughs> he did it matter this year. <laughs> it's because we really didn't use it much this season. Again, uh, Eric Gordon tonight, 21 minutes play. was 0-5 from the field overall. Uh, zero points, a negative 18, 0 of 4 from beyond the arc. I mean, just a complete L out there tonight, Matthew. And again, so you talk about Bull Bull and you talk about the opportunities that lie before the Phoenix Suns. And it's it's in those Gordon minutes. Gordon has had a rough go of it. Gordon hasn't been productive. He doesn't play the defense necessary against a second team unit. As we mentioned, 41 points from the Minnesota Timberwolves tonight. And that was led by 12 points from Nas Reed. Uh, you ended with 18 points, 12 of those coming in the first half, from Nikhil Alexander-Walker. Uh, Luca Garza ended up, now granted it was the end of the game, but like with five points. I mean, like, no, TJ Warren played in this game. By the way, we were sitting down with like six minutes left in the game. We didn't even fucking watch anymore. We were setting up our equipment. I didn't realize TJ got out there. Uh, but their bench is better than us. And that is a challenge in this game, or I'm sorry, in this series, is the fact that this is a team that has a much deeper bench. And if Eric Gordon isn't producing in any capacity, if he's not providing anything offensively, you're fucked because he ain't giving you shit defensively. I'm cussing a lot. No, yeah. You um, you know what? The thing is, is it's just an interesting series. If you do look at a lot of other, these other teams, are going to have better benches. And you look at us, we have to have the better players. And you have a guy like Anthony Edwards, who we haven't talked about yet, where oh, I, don't yeah. bench, I don't look at the bench as a big issue. I look at it as like, can the Suns have the best player in the series? All right, so before the series started, before the playoffs started, we did talk about Anthony Edwards as GA. And I did say that Anthony Edwards can probably have the better playoff run, which sucks because it's like they play the Suns the first series. And, you know, tonight, I'm not saying this is going to be a continued thing, but he did hit the big shots. He did make the bigger plays ahead of KD, ahead of Devin Booker, and ahead of Bradley Beal. He outshined them, and that's the one thing we can't have. So the bench is always going to be an issue. I think we'll have like the one, maybe two games where the bench steps up, where we get the roll, where we get the bounce, and where we get where we get Eubanks actually hitting those like little hook shots or something. Be like, oh my god, Eubanks, and we get like Bobo coming in and hit a big three or something like that. We'll have those fun games, maybe. But I don't look at that because that's not the way we're going to win. I, I just I am so focused on our big three and out playing the other players and ha- being the best player out of. Anthony Edwards. I'm not talking about Gobert. I think Cat can have a good game. He can go on a run, but they have to outplay Edwards. That's the only way they're going to win the series. Yeah, Edwards is definitely somebody you have to shut down. But again, they have Carl Anthony Towns, who's going to pop off for one game in the series. That's a guarantee. Like there'll be a 30 point Cat game. And you take a look, and I'm going to circle back to Eric Gordon. Like if and I, and I see the Jamsters, and I understand your frustrations. I agree with them, but there's nothing you can do about like the Drew Eubank situation, right? Like he is the backup to Yusuf Nurkic, and he will get the minutes. Eric Gordon can be played out of this series if need be, if he's not producing. And we've seen that from Frank Vogel a little bit earlier, not too long ago when Grayson Allen was having a hard time hitting shots. He's like, you know what? I'm going to start Royce O'Neal. And that might even be a strategy going into game two. It's like start Royce O'Neal, have Grayson Allen, who's nursing a potential injury, coming off the bench. And again, we don't know the severity of said injury as of yet. But that being said, if Royce O'Neal comes out a little bit more of a defensive presence, a little bit more switchability on all sides. But Gordon has a long way to go to prove to his teammates and to especially us as fans that he is a viable option in this series because he has been somebody who has had his ups, has had his downs throughout the season. And the downs, I feel like, are a little bit more than ups. So I'm looking forward to seeing if 
that's an adjustment that the Suns can make because if Eric Gordon comes in and just gives you 10 points, this becomes a completely different game. But he was a zero on offense. He's a zero on defense. And now we transition into that talk. The sheer fact that, yes, Anthony Edwards had a fantastic game uh, against the Suns in game one. Exactly what we didn't want to happen, right? Like a potential Anthony Edwards goes nuclear. He goes 14 of 24 for 33 points. Now high volume, yes. Uh, goes four of eight from beyond the arc. Only shot a couple free throws, but he also had nine total rebounds, six assists. Did have the six turnovers, but it was definitely a high-usage Anthony Edwards game. And the reason for that is his three previous games against the Phoenix Suns, he had very, very, very poor outings, both relative to shooting and overall performance. So it was a clear direction by Chris Finch, the head coach of the Minnesota Timberwolves, that, hey, this is going to be a – we're throwing everything at Anthony Edwards. We want him to be engaged. We want him to gain confidence. We want him to be the guy with the ball in his hands. For good or for bad, but we need that from him to establish, hopefully, which occurred, some confidence. And now you have a confident Anthony Edwards going into game two, Matthew. What are your thoughts on what you saw tonight, the strategy, and what you expect in game two? Well, it didn't, it didn't start out too great. I mean, he did have the 10 points early, and then he did get in the foul trouble, like you said. It was like walking to – it looked like he was walking to the locker room, but he just had his hands over his head like, oh, fuck. Like he got his he was out. sad. He was just sad, and the guy's competitive. The guy knows exactly what's going on in the series. Everyone kind of does, but I think maybe a lot of us might be blind to the fact that a lot of uh, the Suns fans, a lot of the media have been picking the Wolves, are with the Suns to beat the Wolves in the series. Not easily, but it's like, hey, they're better. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like when the Kings were kind of like the favorite to beat the Pelicans, the plans. Like, wait, what? Why are we picking the Kings? So it's kind of scary in that fact where like we forget the struggles that the Suns had as a complete team throughout the whole season. And then we're kind of just looking at the Wolves matchup and we're just saying like, oh yeah, like look at the matchup. We, we defeated them at ease. And then you have a guy like Anthony Edwards who needs to prove himself. He's a, he's a guy that's probably a year or two years or maybe three years away from being probably the best player in the NBA. And the playoffs right now is first stint. He wants to make a name for himself. So there's nothing scarier than that, especially with the athletic skill set he has and the way that he can score the ball. But he was hitting a lot of difficult shots. Like he has some difficult threes. This, of course, he only had two more points than KD. You're like, oh, the box score's not much different from KD. It's like, no, but it came at crucial times. He hit those big shots that kind of put us away, and that's what you want from your superstar. So that's what they got from him. So I'm not looking at an overall from his box score. I was looking at times when it happened, when he came through for the team, and he put this team, he put the Suns away late and kind of early in the fourth quarter, and you're like, oh, shit, like he's not going to miss a shot. So that's the kind of guy he is, a guy having that confidence. It's scary, and that's one thing I don't want to see. Yeah, I mean, it was definitely that third quarter that really fucked the Suns because, again, not not a horrible uh, score at halftime. But, you know, I mean, being what? I think they were down 10 points going into the half. Is that what it was? It was 61 to 51. So, But that third quarter where the Suns get outscored 31 to 21 and where Anthony Edwards has 18 points and 8 of 11 shooting and 2 of 3 from beyond the arc. Like, that's the game right there. And I was watching the game with uh, some members of the Fan of the Flames and uh, Jay Joyce. Thanks for joining us, Jay Joyce. I know he left a little bit earlier here, but from the He's on Fire podcast, he says, despite the loss, I had a fun time with you guys. It ain't over till it's over. But that's what we're saying. There was a stretch at the back half of the third quarter where, like, ah, oh, this could end up being the game because of the way that Anthony Edwards kind of gained that confidence, getting that – feeling that, that, that swagger – going out there his shoes are ugly by the way the ae ones have nothing on the book ones i'm just throwing that out there for anyone who's a shoe person out there yeah i, I no one heard you because you're on mute um but you said something about they don't twist ankles uh but they look clearly better but i mean that was the game it was ae in that third quarter and it's definitely something that we have to watch out throughout the series because this as i mentioned before the series began my number one concern about the series is this could be the coming out party for anthony edwards it's the one thing that could negate the effectiveness of the big three and the talent that they have is the sheer fact that AE could have his coming out party. And I don't know about you, Matthew, but I think that the Suns are kind of known for allowing people to go off on them. They are. And the one thing with AE, you said it's scary, but the thing is like, he's always believed himself to be this way. And it's been more consistent this year than anything the big three has brought. I think Katie's been really good defensively. He's been there for us. A book's been on and off, but having them having to share the ball and then A just having to, just knowing that he's the guy, the whole series that he's actually the guy and he's going to lead them to a championship if they make it that far. That's more confidence in him. It's like, hey, I'm going to be the dude to knock down the shots. I want to be the guy to make sure that this team gets a victory, uh, or just to move on every series. 
that's huge because I feel I still feel like Booker, Beal, and KD obviously are figuring out like, well, who's gonna step up when? So that's a scary thing for us as Suns fans. It just sucks because I feel like we go into some playoff series and I'm like, we're going against teams against and players that I like. Like I like Anthony Edwards. I enjoy watching him play, and now I have to hate him uh, for this series, and I'm okay with that. But it's like. Just don't do it at my expense, man. Have a shitty series, man, and carry the fuck on. I'll root for you in Paris when you play with Devin Booker and Kevin Durant. Uh, Rudy Gobert, real quick, I want to talk about this game before we get to the sub. Reddit stakeout. Uh, Rudy Gobert in this game is obviously he's another X factor, if you will, uh, for the Minnesota Timberwolves, knowing that he can pound the interior. You know, only four or six from the field, but he had 14 points. Uh, he had 16 total rebounds. Him versus Nurk, and Nurk had, was four of six as well, had nine points and only four rebounds. Only nine and four from Nurk. Does that concern you, Matthew? I look at them as canceling each other out. So I think this whole series, just like if you watch the bonus in Big V last game, Valanciunas, it's kind of like they cancel each other out in a way where like Sabonis is too small on the defensive end. Valanciunas, whatever his name is, is too big defensively. Sabonis kind of goes around. They kind of cancel each other out. I look at that in this series too, where I'm not too worried about that. I think obviously go obviously go Bears defensive player of the year, but it's the other guys around that's going to make a difference. So whatever Nurk does, I liked how he was in the second quarter trying to hit our – yeah, it was second quarter, or maybe it was the third quarter. No, it was second quarter, where he was hitting Beal, he was hitting KD on kind of the back cuts and stuff like that. That's where he's more valuable. Them head to head, I don't care as much. Do you? Care as much I, I do if foul trouble is involved, and I think that Nurkic was smart. He had four fouls tonight, but I feel like he was smart with his fouls, and because that could be the narrative of a game when you and I are sitting here in the post game podcast, and if we lose a game later in this series, it's because. Nurkic got into foul trouble, and because of that, the depth of the Suns was tested at the center position, and that's a whole narrative that I don't want to navigate, but it's definitely something that there's a possibility of happening. Uh, canceling each other out, yes. And, and Jamsters, if you're watching or you watched the game, you felt like Nurk missed 13 layups. He only missed two. I mean, I felt there's a lot of missed layups in the game, but it wasn't all Nurkic. That's what I'm it. saying. It, yeah, there's so many missed layups. It's so painful around the room to even watch anything that was going on. So I'm like, all right, just get the ball out. Don't worry about down there. Now, I will say an awkward moment lies before us, Matthew, because both you and I were in Minnesota today to do the subreddit stakeout. And it's just funny because sitting right behind Matthew in a booth is a couple of like these old people. And they're just here for like a nice Saturday lunch. And they are just going to either hear Blue Agave and, you know, their favorite thing is the chips and salsa. And they're about to hear Batman and Valley Lissy. Uh, so let's talk about the subreddit stakeout. The Suns Jam Session subreddit stakeout. I just made eye contact with the lady and she wonders what the fuck I'm doing. I can't hear you. I said DM me about a letter. I'm too embarrassed right now. <laughs> I don't know, All right. Hot. We're, we are in Scottsdale. I don't know. Do I look hot? Uh, here? Yeah. If you. I get a lot. Of you're Veronica Vaughn. <laughs> yeah, I'd say you'd have a real nice Heidi. Where is she? Yeah, Frida. I don't know. People are saying ew. I don't know why. Uh, people. <laughs> I feel like I look hot today. <laughs> are definitely looking at us. I think so says Jay. Is looking at me and judging me a little bit more than I want to admit. Uh, but. Let's talk about what happened on the subreddit. Now, before Grayson Allen left the game with an injury, <laughs> he elbowed Mike Conley in the face, and that left a lot of negative comments in the chat. Grayson Allen is the biggest bitch in NBA history. I didn't get any Grayson Allen chat, but it's so <laughs> <laughs> Held the Suns under 100 points. This is so weird. <laughs> this is worse than doing that at the game. <laughs> if this was our worst matchup of the playoffs, going to be a breeze. And someone also, he also added, I knocked on wood, right? After this, don't worry. <laughs> right when you thought Grayson Allen isn't as much of a piece of shit as he used to be, he goes and does this. <laughs> Even the bench players trying to shove it down our throats. Welcome to the playoffs basketball mini. Fuck Ted Cruz, son. 
I forgot Thaddeus Young existed. Still a solid vet. Fuck me, the sun's bench is bad. Oh, I was on mute for that one. All right, let's try this again. Nurk could commit mass murder and not get a foul call at this point. Holy fuck. 16 and 0 dream starts now. <laughs> Holy crap, I totally forgot Beal was playing. LOL, has he even touched the ball? Damn, Josh and Kogi playing garbage time minutes now? <laughs> That's the last one I had. <laughs> and the last one that I had. If Katie pulls a gun out and shot a member of the Timberwolves, the refs would play on. The Suns Jam Session subreddit stakeout. All right, there you go. Uh, both Valley Lissy and Batman. I have no idea where your hat is. I think you gave it to those old people behind you, man. They looked at me right when I did that, and uh, that was kind of awkward for everybody. Is it on the ground? Like, what the fuck is your hat? It's kind of awkward for everyone. It's in that guy's soup. There she is. All right. Uh, let's talk about the jam star. Jam star of the game. Kevin Durant? Yeah, I guess. This is the first one where I'm like, I don't even care. <laughs> <laughs> Losing 25 in a playoff game is yeah. shitty, but it's Kevin Durant. You know, I think it's uh, – it just – it be what it be. It be what it be at this point. So, game two. All right, let's talk about this. Adjustments. Yeah. What do you expect from the Suns relative to adjustments in game two, Matthew? I want to say a lot of team ball, but the way that Minnesota is defensively where they can just guard you on ball and they can just make it a mess where you're trying to actually pass it up, make back cuts or anything like that, where they're just extra long. You saw it a lot today. You didn't see it really in the first three games where the Suns always came out hot. Um, it's a difficult thing because I think adjustments might just be as simple as, hey, we're in Minnesota. Let's get one out of the two and let's just hit the shots. And that might be what KD is saying in the post games. Like, hey, we had good looking shots. We're just going to make them. I think a big thing is great, uh, Grace and Allen and Royce O'Neal hitting those big threes. So I don't really see much other than that. What do you see? Yeah, I think it's obviously going to come down to uh, Grace and Allen's health. I think that's absolutely big for this team. Uh, but at the same time, I, I definitely think that the, the primary adjustment is twofold. One, continue to be who you are. It was a, it was a down game for Devin Booker, and you know scores more in eighteen. The bench plays a little bit better. There's opportunities there, right? I mean, you, you look overall. This it was tied for the turnover game. They both had fifteen in this one. Now, granted, Minnesota scored twenty three points off of turnovers, where we scored nineteen. Like so, so that's not what killed us tonight. It, what killed us tonight was the fact that there was a stretch in the third quarter where Ant went nuclear. Devin Booker shriveled which is not something we're used to as Suns fans. Devin Booker in the playoffs is a good player. And relative to adjustments, you, now you have to make more adjustments, obviously, than, well, we just need Devin Booker to play better, right? So defensively, I think you have to find strategic ways to take Ant off his game, play the physical way that you want to play, and knock him off his spots, much akin to what they were trying to do with Kevin Durant throughout this game, And although it didn't necessarily work. But I think that it's definitely – you know, there, there's going to be a lot of micro adjustments that need to occur. Uh, taking a look at the old Twitter, I'm going to log in there real quick and just kind of see if there's any post game comments that I do want to bring up prior to us getting out of here. Uh, Kevin Durant on Devin Booker after Booker going for 18 points on five of 16 shooting. I think he'll have a great game too. Uh, X rays were negative on the right ankle sprain for Grayson Allen. We'll see how he responds to treatment for Tuesday's game again. So the fact that they obviously uh, have three games off or three days off or two nights, if you will. Uh, very important. 
Uh, on Anthony Edwards' 33-point game, Frank Vogel said he's a great player. You try to do your best to slow him down without being exposed on the backside, and that's true because if they try to overcommit to him, they're going to hit him on the backside. Uh, Bradley Beal, his, his response, now we got to respond. So game two, Tuesday night uh, in Minnesota again. We will be live. Uh, Matthew, we're doing playback for that one, right? Perfect. So playback.tv slash bright side of the sun. Matthew and I will be hanging out there. Come join us. If you want to hang out with us and watch a game, uh, go through the ebbs and flows of the playoff experience with both Matthew and myself. Head to playback.tv backslash bright side of the sun. The link is in the chat below. Whether you're listening or watching, we do have that link there for you. So looking forward to hanging out with you and just going through the shit that is the emotional stress that is the playoffs. Right, Matthew? You're muted. It's already taking the toll on me a little bit. I'm going to slip down over here, but uh, I'll be fine. Game two response. We'll go. We'll make this a series. I'm not going to say we're going to win the series, but it'll be a better series than tonight. And taking a look at the final results thus far through Twitter on the Grayson Allen drop, it looks like the old one's winning, man. 61% to 39%. So if you're listening on Spotify, vote yeah. the poll as well. And I think this is kind of one of those things where I like the new drop myself just because I'm kind of over the old one. Uh, But there is a beautiful cheesiness to the old one. And like Saul says, where's my I voted sticker? Uh, It's in the mail. Uh, If you came and you hung Uh, out with us. (laughs) P. Diddy will will, uh, deliver to you soon. We had some stickers we were handing out tonight. So thank you to everybody who joined us here at Blue Agave, who signed up for the autograph app. Again, do so. Use promo code SUNSJAM. Phil's taking off, so shout out to Phil for hanging out with us. Uh, we do have a new outro, Matthew, so tell them what to do before we drop this new outro. Go home and love your family. Call SUNSJAM set. Post game thrill. John and Matthew. Podcast skill. Analyzing game for comedic flair since 2019. They've been right here. Sun Jam Session, Post Game Pod, talking Suns ball with the Jams the Squad from the Valley of the Sun, spreading the word. Original podcast, haven't you heard? Subreddit stick out behind enemy lines. Batman Valley, Lizzie and Curry combined, reporting live with jokes to the brain, adding flavor to the podcast game. Sun Jam Session, Post Game Pod, talking Suns ball with the Jams the Squad from the Valley of the Sun, spreading the word. Original podcast, haven't you? Subreddit so stake out behind enemy lines. Batman, Valley, Lissy, and Kermit combined. Reporting live with jokes to the brain. Added flavor to the podcast game. Such a session post game pod. Talking Suns ball with the chance to squad. From the Valley of the Sun. Spreading the word. Original podcast. Haven't you heard? Are just passing through Sun Jam Sessions got some for you Lick the eyes to the beats that are bite With the suns through the day and the night After every game Don't miss the beat Sun Jam Sessions gonna bring the heat John and Matthew 